the last part of the 7.0 refresher notes and you have a quadratic expression in the form that should be form not for ax squared plus bx plus c what this means is you're going to have a number in front of x squared where up above we were able to either factor it out or there wasn't one there other than one now you'll need to multiply a times c and then split to get that b value so this process is a little bit different Let's take a look at these two examples as our refresher. If we're asked to factor 4x squared plus x minus 3, the factoring is a little different because of that 4 in front of the quadratic term. That means we're going to multiply a times c. So just multiply those two together. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Our plan now is to find factors that multiply to get negative 12, but add to get a 1x in the middle, or basically a 1. Numbers that go into 12 are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, or 3 and 4. Now if we use 3 and 4, we would have to make the 3 negative. That way 3, negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, but negative 3 plus 4 is that 1x in the middle. So here's where we have to be careful in the factor process. If this is the pair we want, that's great, but we really need to just split that b term in the middle to negative 3x plus 4x. Technically, that's what equals the 1x up above. That's what it means to split that b term. We then take the 4x squared and put it out in front, and we put that minus 3 at the end. From here to factor, we're not quite done yet. We have to do grouping. And what that means is we're going to put a parenthesis around the first two terms and a parenthesis around the second two terms. In the first parenthesis, I notice we have a common factor. 4x squared minus 3x, we could take out at least an x and see what's left over. If we factor x out of 4x squared, we just have 4x and then minus. If we factor 4x, or excuse me, x out of negative 3x, we just have minus 3. Now in that next parenthesis, we already have 4x minus 3, but there isn't really a common factor. We need a placeholder here. So that means I have to put a 1 out in front, because if I multiply 1, it doesn't change the value of that parenthesis. When we do this method, and I, re I realize it's probably a little tricky for us to remember, the goal is to have a matching parenthesis in this step, and we do. So that's a good sign. That means that's one of our final answers in our factored form. Then we take those two parts on the outside and we add them together. x plus 1 doesn't combine, but that gives us our other factor, x plus 1. And this would be the factored form of 4x squared plus x minus 3. Now the parentheses can be written in any order, but they have to have the minus 3 with the 4 and the plus 1 by itself with x. All right, let's try another one just to see if we can handle this process again. Let's factor 3x squared plus 10x plus 8. Again, what throws us off here is the fact that we have that number in front of x squared. That means we have to take a times c, and 3 times 8 is 24. Our goal is to find two numbers that multiply to get positive 24, but then add to get negative 10 as a coefficient in front of the bx term in the middle. Numbers that go into 24, we've got 1 and 24, we have 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. So we run into a little bit of a conundrum here. We have 12 and 2 that could work in some way to get negative 10 in the middle, and we have 4 and 6. Remember, our goal is to have the two numbers multiply to get positive 24, but then add to get negative 10. And unfortunately, the 2 and the 12 won't do that for us we would have to make the 4 and the 6 negative. That way when we multiply them, they equal positive 24, and when we add them, we get that negative 10. So there's the a times c, and we can use the negative 4 and the negative 6 to split the b term in the middle. I'm just going to rewrite that as negative 4x minus 6x. From there, I'm just going to drop that first term down out in front, 3x squared, and drop the plus 8 after at the end. Group the first two terms and the second two terms. 3x squared minus 4x, again they at least each have an x in common, 
and we would have 3x minus 4 left over. Now the unique thing about this second parenthesis, we have negative 6x plus 8. We have to factor the negative if it's in front of the x term. So we have to take that negative out. What else could we take out of 6 and 8? They both would have a 2 as their common factor. Let's see what would be left over. If we factor negative 2 out of negative 6x, we'd have positive 3x left over. And if we factor negative 2 out of positive 8, ah, get this, we'd get negative 4. That indicates we have a matching parenthesis. That's a great sign. That's one of our final answer parentheses. And then, of course, take the two parts on the outside. We'll add them together. x plus negative 2 will just become x minus 2. And there's our other factor. Now think about what this is going to look like. Instead of having x, we're going to have trig terms like sine theta or tangent of maybe r. And we'll have to factor with those trig terms as well as doing this kind of method. The last factoring refresher to go over with you is called the difference of perfect squares. Difference means we're subtracting, and perfect squares means the numbers or the variables that you're using can be broken down to two values that are the same. For example, if you have this template x squared minus c squared, the parentheses or the factor would break down into two parentheses. We would split the x into or the x squared into an x and an x, and then whatever c squared is, we'd split that up into its square root form. So c and c. Now in between them, we would just have one plus sign and one minus sign. But here's the deal: this only works when you have subtraction. and it only works when you know you have a perfect square. So perfect square numbers are like 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, and so on. Just numbers that you know are perfect squares. Let's try a couple of examples here, and then we'll be done with this refresher lesson. Our first example, 5x squared minus 20. I see the x squared, and I recognize that's a perfect square, but 5 and 20 aren't. Thinking about our rule up at the very top of this page, though, when factoring, you always want to check for a common factor first. And we could take 5 out of both of those terms. When we do that, we have x squared left over in the first term, and it's subtraction. 5 out of 20, we would have 4 left over. And 4 is the same as 2 squared. So there's kind of our format of x squared and then c squared. That would split apart into x and x. The 2 squared would be 2 and 2. And then we just have to remember one of them is plus and one of them is minus. Also, don't forget about that common factor out in front, that 5. That's the factored form for 5x squared minus 20. Here's our last example, m squared plus 16. We have a perfect square for m, and 16 is a perfect square, but can you tell what makes this not possible? Some students catch this right away, and that's great. We can't factor if it's addition. So because of the addition sign, this entire statement is not factorable. And that would mean we'd have to solve with another method, like, oh, dare I say it, quadratic formula. But that's not for us today. We're just working on factor options. So this is the rest of our notes for Lesson 7.0.